Hello, Mary. Hello, Tatiana. I'm going to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. Okay. Uh, please introduce yourself. Tell us how, how and when and why did you get into Scientology? Okay. Well, I am Mary Freeman, and I, in the church I was known as Mary Marin, and sometimes Mary the Mouth Marin. And I came into Scientology in the early 60s. I came in because I met someone where I was learning. I was taking dance class, and there was someone in the class who had a comp cycle and TRs, a communication cycle and TRs. And I thought she was a Martian because I'd never met anybody that had a comp cycle and TRs. And I knew there was something special about her, the way she communicated. And I hung around her and talked to her. And then uh, a fr another friend in the class who knew that she was a Scientologist uh, we all went out for coffee with that other friend, and he said, why don't you tell her about Scientology? And she said, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to talk about that. So apparently she had had dissemination failures, but I didn't know this, because I didn't know anything about Scientology. I couldn't even pronounce the word. And I asked her, what is Scientology? What is that? And she said, oh, it's just this organization I belong to. And I said, well, what kind of organization? And she said, oh, it's just an organization of people who believe in ARC. And I said, ARC? And he said, tell her about ARC. And, and I said, what is ARC? And she said, well, it's affinity reality communication, and that makes understanding. And I said, what? Are you telling me that there's an organization in this city, New York City, that believes in affinity reality and communication? And she said, yes, that's, that's the organization I belong to, Scientology. I said, where are they? <laughs> because it seemed like it was a desert to me of affinity, reality, and communication amongst people. And so she told me where it was, and then I kept her up all night. I went home with her. We went to the beach at 5 o'clock in the morning. And she, told, she answered a whole bunch of questions, and she, was ask, she told me about past lives. And I was asking her all these advanced questions she thought were advanced, and she said, I can't answer all these questions. I'm only on the comm course. And I thought she was a genius. I thought she was the smartest person I ever met. I said, whatever this comm course is, I'm doing it. And then she sent me to the organization, and I called in the morning, and I said, hello, my name is Mary, and I'm a friend of Marion's, and uh, she's a Scientologist, and I want to be a Scientologist. And they said, come on over. Oh, and the way they answered the phone Watkins 41142, like that. And that was Andy Bagley. He was the org sec. And I, I told him that I wanted to be a Scientologist, and he said, okay. And I went, oh, he does that too. <laughs> he has that same way of communicating. I didn't know anything about it, but I knew it was different. So I went in there, and I asked him all my questions, and he answered them correctly. And so I got all the books, and I read all the books, and I joined staff as a volunteer, and then I went in training. All right. Okay. And what training did you get uh, while you were online? Uh, and how did you feel also? How did you feel? What can you say about org, the atmosphere? Oh, well, the org was just many different shades of gray, because from what I was told, Andy Bagley was colorblind. So it wasn't decorated very well. And I didn't care. I thought I had entered the portals of heaven. I thought I, was, I had arrived. It was just the best place. Even though it was an old building, um, the address was 200 West 24th Street in New York. And you took a rickety old elevator to the second floor and you walk in and there was a desk and reception and um, some rooms and spaces. It was very colorless and drab. It didn't matter. I thought it was great. I was so happy to be there because these people of what they believed, what they believed and what they practiced and what the book said, what L. Ron Hubbard wrote. And I read Dianetics. I read Science of Survival. I read Problems of Work. I read Fundamentals of Thought. I read all these books, and they all made total sense to me. It was what I had been looking for and complaining about, quite frankly, about the way the world was. And here were the answers. And I knew that people were, I used to say to my mother, you know, Mom, the whole world is crazy. Why is the whole world crazy? And she says, well, how do you know that? What are you comparing it to? I said, I don't know. Maybe the, pic the, maybe the stories that you told me, the bedtime stories about the fairies and, 
and Daddy read me st stories about Sir Galahad or something. Whatever it was, I had a picture in my mind, and the world was the opposite because people were not communicating and not using logic, which my father trained me to use from a very young age. And people were fighting, and people were believing in lies instead of truth, and they were afraid of the truth. All these things that I was observing as I grew up. So when I found Scientology, it was like I was dying of thirst, and here was the fountain that I was looking for. So anyway, the org looked great to me, and I was very happy to be there, and he put me on, they, Andy gave me a, a job working on um, graphs and marking old personality tests and things, and and then in exchange for that, I got the comm course, which was so exciting that I got a chance to be on this incredible comm course that this girl had done that made her such a genius. <laughs> so uh, that's how I got started. Very nice. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> um, how far did you get on training? Like, what, what have you received? Through? Okay. Uh, within the year, I, went, I was sent down by the New York Org to Washington, D.C. Uh, to get the HCA, HPA training, uh, professional auditor at uh, the uh, Washington, D.C. org, which had an academy, and the New York org did not have an academy yet. So I went down there and got my training. I was on course for six months. And uh, the people who trained me had been trained at St. Hill. And they had been trained by L. Ron Hubbard at St. Hill because it was the early 60s. And so they had all the most... Uh, advanced methods of supervising and training. They were called instructors, not supervisors. And they gave me, I remember my first day on course, they put in front of me all the scales and all the codes and the axioms, and I had to learn all these. I had to memorize them. And we had twins that we worked with, but a lot of the time I just spent by myself memorizing. And it was duplication, you know. I also had gone down, before I started uh, training, I went down to Washington, D.C., six months before that, uh, to see L. Ron Hubbard. He gave a lecture at the Washington, D.C., well, in that vicinity of the organization, but it was at the hotel. I think it was the Marriott, but some of the old-timers who were at that, it was the uh, Clearing Convention, Clearing Congress, Clearing Congress, and he introduced the Problems Intensive at that Congress, and he had a whole list of the, the buttons, the, the words that uh, suppress a person, which is called the prep check buttons, but it was a way to help a person unburden areas of their life uh, that was causing chronic problems and could make them sick and all that. So he taught us this at the, at the Congress, and he had the duplication drill that we all had to do where we would pick up uh, a bunch of words and duplicate, and they made no sense, sentences that made no sense, and we would do drills of having to repeat these back to each other. So that was the first time that I became familiar with a duplication exercise. And then he also had first goal clear, a first goal clear, which I didn't know what it was, but it was someone who had achieved a state of clear at that time, and it was based on goals. And then the, he had what he called goals problem mass, which was how they got clear, running and getting rid of the charge on their goals and problems, which would form a mass, a mental mass. And that was called GPMs. And I had joined the co-audit on that, so I was beginning to learn about it. And uh, he had people doing live demonstrations of items in their GPMs, on the stage, in costume. So they would be walking around with these sort of very strange uh, outfits on and valences or personality types and depicting themselves as these types of items. And that was very, very interesting. And it was a live demo that he had on that stage to show us what GPMs were all about. A lot of people never heard who went to this Congress, but they saw, they saw it acted out, and they understood just from seeing it demonstrated by O. Ron Hubbard. When he came out on that stage, he was wearing a gold lame jacket, and there was a drum roll, and he had a sore thumb. Now, I don't have to tell you that L. Ron Hubbard 
was capable of having a sore thumb because there it was and we all saw it and I never forgot that he was capable of having a sore thumb. And that saved me from taking everything and never disagreeing. Sometimes I would disagree because I knew he was capable of having a sore thumb. So that was a great service that he did for me. And then I met him at that Congress. And he introduced, I introduced myself to him and I told him I was going to be an auditor and he said, thank you. He had very strong intention and presence. And any time I've ever seen Ron, he had great presence and great a space that was very um, high energy and powerful. Anyway, so I ended up going on course and it took six months and I came out of there and I was a trained auditor. Went back to the New York org and I audited there for years uh, on staff. On staff, oh, but uh, oh, I I heard a lot that uh, when when you're on staff, you mostly are moving on the uh, left side of the bridge, which means you are getting trained to help others. But uh, staff are the ones who doesn't get much chance to uh, grow up, grow on the. Yes. Right. Well, actually, we had co-audits at that time. The uh -huh. co-audit was very very popular. Okay. So when I first came in, we were doing very advanced work in the co-audit and I got a lot of auditing in there tremendous amount it was wonderful it was some of the best case scan I've ever had and also um, when I became a, a full-fledged staff member after that was in the beginning then I went about six months and I went another six months so a year later I was at the New York Org on staff and the auditing that I got then um, well, let's see before I became a staff member I bought and paid, I paid for a, uh, an intensive of auditing, which was 25 hours. And the prices at that time were uh, much more reasonable and much more um, realistic than the prices that they have now. So I was able to get that money together uh, without much difficulty and get 25 hours worth of auditing. And I was audited on CCHs and problems intensive. And it was just some of the best auditing I ever had. It was wonderful. My first auditor was Tim Mott Smith. And I think he may even still be auditing in Los Angeles at this time. He was wonderful. He gave me um, tremendous opportunity to get my withholds off. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Oh, God. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was great. So I got that auditing, and then I also got co-auditing. And then as a staff member, I was given power... Um, Power processing. Let's see, was I given power? Power processing as a staff member because I signed a two and a half year contract. And Valerie Stansfield, Valerie Weiss at that time was my auditor. She also, Valerie, she was the Qualsec and I was the director of review. And I want to acknowledge Valerie. She was a genius. She knew how to do work, tech work with a folder, to show me how to analyze a folder before. Case supervision became really widespread before the Class 8 course. Uh, Valerie took a folder and she turned it upside down. And she showed me how she did this. She turned the folder upside down. She opened it up to the back page. And she had a piece of paper and she would write everything that that person had been run on on a list. And she would go through it and she'd see how they did, how they did. And what it did for me was it gave me a reality on being able to confront a folder with a tremendous amount of sessions and worksheets in it. And I was able to just page by page write down the information. And she trained me that way. I was very grateful for that so that I never got overwhelmed from taking, even if someone brought me a whole stack of folders when I was CSing. I would just take the first folder and turn it upside down because that's what she taught me to do. So uh, Valerie was just a, a great mentor for me on many things when I first became a staff member and when I was auditing and review in Qual and she was the Qual sec.